I wanted to cover a few things with this video, I am Couch Coop. I want to go over what I feel are the better Fallout games following the TV series, and I also want to talk about that, spoiler free, episodes up to 4. Talking of the number 4, I also want to talk about Fallout 4 on the PC at high settings with that weapon effects button on and the high definition texture pack downloaded. All of this footage is going to be at 1080 and at 60 frames per second. Now that brings me on to the current condition of Fallout 4 on the PlayStation 5. I've covered it extensively, recently did a video about getting to Atlantic City via Fallout 76, and its performance is very much below par. On the 25th of this month, which is in 10 days time, we see a true 10th gen patch come in for console versions of Fallout 4. But PC owners have been enjoying these specs and remember, there's no mods on top of this. Hang on, Piper's doing a walk past. So I want it documented, not only for myself, but what this game looks like currently on some of its high-end specs against what this new patch is going to be all about. Now, I haven't really dug into it too much. Maybe they'll be ray tracing, maybe they'll rework something, but I'm pretty damn sure there's not going to be a lot of difference. And they made us wait for a very long time. A look at Bethesda's recent games as kind of three main pillars of excellence. Skyrim, Fallout 4, and yes, I will say Starfield, currently not at the moment, it's a shorter, slightly more translucent pillar, but those for me are the modern classics that have come out of that studio. Now we need to have the conversation about New Vegas. Its relationship with the TV show, it's kind of been reckoned a little bit as official law. And I think the explanation for this is that Todd Howard is very much on site for the filming of this TV series. And remember, Bethesda is his baby, so to speak, and Obsidian really aren't part of that family. So I can totally understand why he didn't put a big focus on the material covered in that particular game. Talking about Obsidian, I just put out their Gorgon DLC video, thoroughly worth a look. Let's talk about the TV show because I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Episode one, the big hour long showcase was excellent and the Raiders are introduced incredibly. There's a really cool bit of intrigue and her as a character introduced just about at the perfect level. We've also got similar backstories or some parallels with the plot with Fallout 3 with a missing father figure and quite a cool dramatic scene when that all comes to a head. So episode one, absolutely excellent. Don't want to spoil it too much because I want to keep this as casual as possible, but just wanting to let my audience and other people that are into or play the video games that it is not terrible. This is not a Halo situation. I'm very happy with it and I'm about midway with the whole thing and I want to talk about episode two. That's got quite a lot of particulars in it and it also doubles down on the lore a lot more. You're introduced to more elements of the Fallout world. It's the introduction to the Brotherhood of Steel on an individual level as opposed to an organization which I liked and we see a really cool cameo from Rappaport and a complete unhinged asshole so not too much acting needed there and then there's a bear fight with the famous fallout hairless Yaguai. this is a great scene because they straddle two things in camera effects and a man in a suit that goes both for the brotherhood of steel and the bear and then they switch quite flawlessly to a really cool CGI scene it's a great example of how that series goes it's a really good middle ground with close-ups being practicals and the CGI being put in as and when it's needed. If dumb and ugly had a child, it'd be a super mutant. The situation then develops to an under-experienced individual having the power armor to explore and experiment with and there's a bit of a mistaken identity going on and you don't get the impact of this criminal act in the eyes of the Brotherhood of Steel at full value at this point in the story but it's cool to see someone falling around with this armor set it's a little bit like Vicus in the District 9 finale Hey, see that big blimp? What's the Brotherhood of Steel? 
Why are they here? Episodes two and three also feature some pretty cool locations with a sort of blend of all of the major Fallout settlements. To a certain extent, there's no megaton in here or like a huge massive metropolis. I imagine they're probably saving that for later episodes. But for the stuff you see, the Brahmin, the iguanas are on the stick. It works. You must go up. No. Uh, sorry, Blue. It actually does quite well on location, giving us that supermarket from Fallout 3. I'm talking of locations, Fallout 4's inner city and built up areas. Some of the detail that this texture pack has given me is mind blowing. Look at this pan. If I wasn't crouched, there wouldn't be a massive <laughs> hidden text right in the center of the screen. Other than that, great piece of footage. That sort of brings me on to one of the major aspects of this video. Howard wants everybody to play Fallout 76 and not Fallout 4. Why? Because 76 is live service, brand new as far as Bethesda is concerned, and the Fallout series full of microtransactions. The money just rolls in when people play that game. With this, it's standalone, single disc, completely offline. And it is far more of a lavish universe because of that. I I'm convinced it is much more preferable as a video game for me. Check out this VAT shot. That head bounce and the nonchalant pedestrian is half the reason I love Fallout 4. It's an absolutely incredible game. And look, I get the loot out of the headpiece. Doing the sort of photography thing, sort of Fallout 4 war photographer, does also result in getting like cornered and ambushed by super mutants all the time, but it's still too much fun. The one-liners and the chaos is always excellent. Just briefly back onto that Fallout 76 and Bethesda thing, I'm already seeing droves of people on social media going, oh, I'm gonna step back to Fallout now, I've seen the TV series, oh, I'm gonna download Fallout again. And they're all going to 76, and I'm thinking, no, that is not the way, Fallout 4 is the way. The lighting cascading off these rabid mole rats, I mean, we need to peg this against the PlayStation 5 upgrade. I cannot wait for the 25th. Let's get to Goggins and the ghoul reveal of one of the main protagonists by the looks of it. He's introduced by quite an epic shootout scene and I'm not too sure if it's pointing towards sort of showing us maybe how that works because he seems particularly OP, his gun is ridiculous and he can just swing around and get everybody before they even poke out cover. And this leads on to an introduction of one of the more comedic characters in the front end of the series and it's that shop owner she is absolutely amazing shouting at her husband all the time she's half the reason to watch that particular episode They have approached the ghoul thing quite well, fleshing them out, no pun intended, as individual characters, as does the game's narration. It's excellent how they've given this role to one of the better actors out there in Hollywood, and he just grabs it with both hands. Very slight noticeable CGI smudge on the nose sometimes, but it just falls away after you get completely involved in his character. They obviously end up together, the protagonist, and there are a few comedy scenes from it. It's quite cool chemistry. We then get moved over to our Mr. Gutsy. Just before we do that, check out this marksmanship. I didn't waste loads of ammo and a Molotov cocktail for nothing there. I do want to cover the monsters quickly. Now, understandably, they're holding back a little bit on them. The salamander thing is really cool, but there's not enough Murloc crabs or giant beasts, death claws, but it is, as I say, early doors. What we do have is okay. Could do with a bit more. Dog Me also gets a really cool mention and a major character slot. We also have Ben from Lost in a pretty cool role, so I'm interested in the dynamic with that. And Goggins' character is also getting involved 
on a canine level so there's quite a lot going on with the dog character that is not skimped on and I can tell there was quite a few people who were like I hope it's got the dog in because he wasn't in some of the earlier games on the subject of monsters and enemies super mutants have not turned up yet in the TV series it's going to be really interesting how they address that I would see that as a bit of a challenge on a special effects level, whether to straddle the man in a suit against the in-camera, you know, prosthetic makeup or that CGI full expensive. There is obviously not an unlimited budget on this TV series. I was thinking about that with the licensed music. They choose it really carefully, put it at the start of stuff or iconic scenes. They'll have a big name number from the series in there. I reckon it costs them a fortune. To use it each time the super mutant cgi thing if they even include them i imagine they'll handle it like they did with the brotherhood of steel outfits and straddle both real-time in camera and computer generated image i thought you were talking about mr gutsy yes we will and he is voiced annoyingly for me by a guy called matt berry now i used to love matt he's great he was big on alternative comedy on channel 4 back in the early 2000s but he kind of went very mainstream and he's on just about every advert in the uk he does take the sci-fi edge off things for me garth Marenghi's dark place though i think that complaint could just be applicable to myself but the introduction to what that whole scene is all about is very well handled and again really well handled effects with him looking both physical in camera and some Sometimes you can see a slight bit of CGI. Just did want to mention in the background here, you're seeing some gunplay on Fallout 4 with the 60 frames per second. Man, it sorts that combat out. It's like a third person ARPG shooter almost. Can you believe I'm saying that? Feels absolutely impeccable and crisp. You're in control. It's a big jump from the current PlayStation 5 version. Also a very big weapons nod inside the shop that I forgot to mention on episode two. There's a big pan of some of the classic big heavy weapons from the older Fallout series and Fallout 4 and even the caps, the mention of the currency and stim packs are everywhere. Why do you put Fallout 4 above Fallout New Vegas when it comes to going back and playing a decent legacy Fallout game? Well, here's the thing. I reviewed it about two years ago. It went on to Game Pass, actually. It's got a lot of DLC included. I recommend it. I'll put the link in the description. The game just graphically looks so dated for me. I know that's a bit snobbish, but the whole thing about Fallout for me is getting really immersed in that awesome world. And New Vegas just feels for me too far back in that tech timeline for me to enjoy it enough. However, many feel its story is the strongest in the series. And that's why Obsidian are who they are because of how well they managed with making an awesome Fallout game. I do think it is quite funny that the one time Todd outsources the development of a Fallout game, it potentially becomes one of the best in the series. Maybe that's a bit of spite pointing towards that retconning of the lore in the new TV series. If the last time you played Fallout 4 was on a PlayStation 4 or console and you've not gone near an updated version of the PC port, it's absolutely incredible. The texture pack will blow your mind. The game looks completely different. You can have 60 frames. Combat feels fluid. It is so worth looking at. I cannot emphasize that enough. I will make this same video with the latter TV series review. Piper, can you come for it? Thank you. And we'll go through this all again. By then, we would have had the update for the console version of Fallout 4 on my PlayStation 5. We'll look at that afresh. Cannot wait. Please, in the comments, let me know what your favorite Fallout game is. It might be Fallout 3. And are you a huge fan of New Vegas and annoyed at what's happened with the TV series? I would, of course, see you down there. I ain't telling you how to pick your friends. But Pipe is kind of a troublemaker.